All right, hello, hello, hello. Wow, wow, wow. It's been a while since I've been on here. So this is gonna be a YouTube video. I haven't done one of these. I think the last one I put up was in February or March of 2023. So several, several months ago. But I thought I'd sit down here and paint one. I'm not um, sure exactly what I'm gonna paint, but I have an idea. Not exactly sure how it'll turn out for sure, but um, We'll make it work, right? So, hi, hello, hello, and how you doing? Hope everybody's well, hope everybody's been painting, and I am going to just get started. And we'll talk about some things as I'm painting, as I always do. And uh, I'll just probably ramble along. I got some brushes here. My, my paint got smeared on this one, but um, got my own brushes now. And I'm gonna take that brush, and I'm actually gonna get some Prussian blue. Prussian blue. And I'm gonna make this canvas really dark. It's a one inch brush here that I'm using. And it's using those overlapping strokes. You can call them X strokes, you can call them whatever you want to do. You can even do this as long as you kind of make sure you're overlapping these little circular strokes. And that will ensure that you're blending your paint as you move along. That way, you know, some of your work's already done. And that's really good because I'm lazy and I don't like to work too hard. That's <laughs> So we've had an eventful year. Been to Alaska and been to different places painting and uh, just had a lot of fun. But I've just not had the time to get on here and, or maybe, maybe I should say I haven't taken the time to sit down and do some videos. And I apologize for that, but uh, I'll try to get better. Winter's always a better time. Gardening season is done until next year, so we, uh, we should have some extra time coming up. I just want this to be really dark. This is this Prussian wood. It's really dark. And that's a, probably about as far as I need to take that. So I need to grab a brush to blend with. Let's grab this one here. That's not on that one. That one's not quite soft enough. Let's grab one of my two inch. Look at that paint with rim two inch brushes. Very soft. Very soft. And I'll start down here and just kind of give it, again, just a little bit of blending just a little bit I'm not trying to remove the paint I'm just trying to buzz out anything I don't care for really I stretch out some areas that may be a little chunked up there see how much paint I'm picking up but one thing you can always do is vary your pressure on the brush and that will get you a long way in keeping the uh, in keeping the different values you have in your sky so if I'm a little softer down here a little harder up here it's going to blend a little bit more gonna stay a little bit more uh, light right there especially with a, a liquid medium on there that's white so uh, let's go what do we want to do now let's, 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 let's do that let's do that let's just take some Prussian blue There's a little bit of Prussian blue Prussian blue okay and maybe I got a little bit of black here any black should do um, if you have like midnight black that's probably the best one to use for this but it's got you don't know, midnight black's a little lavendery. So I'll add some blue and some black. And I'm going to take a little bit of white to this. This here. A little bit of white. And I'm just going to tone that down a little bit. And there's a reason. I still want this base color to be fairly blue. Because the only colors I have out to make this whole painting is Prussian blue, black, and white. That's it. So whatever whatever happens here is what happens. Can't really change it too much. I want to stay pretty high with this little mountain. Maybe, maybe there's a mountain right there. I don't know. Maybe it kind of goes up and take your time with it. Kind of lay it out the way you want to. Sometimes rushing and being in a hurry, you know, it gets you stressed out. Painting's not supposed to be stressful. Don't let it be stressful. And it doesn't really matter if it's perfectly shaped. This is going to be a super small amount. I'm not even going to bring it any lower than that, probably. So, just kind of uh, taking that paint and yeah, shaping the old mountain. Like I said, we went to Alaska painting this year, and that was fun. Probably go back again. And uh, got to see all those. Alaska is just an amazing place. Leave her about right there. That's all I need, really. You can zip off some of that paint. 
the less paint you have on here, the better you're going to have to get any snow that you may want on there to stick. And we'll go grab, I want to keep one of those pretty clean, so I'll clean it. I'll grab another brush here, just kind of soften this out just barely. Yeah, just barely. Just to kind of give it a little, little bit here and there. Again, I don't want to bring this down very far. This is not meant to be a uh, mountain that takes up half a canvas here. Just kind of sit that in there. Wherever. Something like that. Something like that. It's still pretty much blue. It does have a little bit of a, uh, a lavender you feel with that uh, midnight black in there. That's what I'm using. That is a black today. I don't use that very often. I had a two clay in here. So let's see. We want to take a little bit of white. Just a little bit, okay? Don't take too much. And again, add a little bit of blue to that. Add a, add a bit of blue to that. So this is supposed to be like an evening or a night scene, so let's make sure that we don't have too much white in our paint. Let's just see if we just kind of, kind of go up here and just, maybe there's some little shadows and bumps in the mountain that'll come out and play, who knows. Oh yeah, just kind of, whew. my hand is shaky guys. I don't, a lot of you probably will watch this, and probably on my Facebook page. I've been a little sick, and uh, pretty much for the last two weeks, I've ate Jello and uh, um, chicken noodle soup. <laughs> Not really getting the uh, calorie uh, need from that, but it helps my stomach. So uh, just a little bit there. Man. I want this to be a super simple mountain. Just, just kind of let it be. Don't want to really fiddle around with it too much. Take a little bit of that dark color and just throw a little dark back in there. Maybe. I want the shadows to be quite dark, but I do like I like a little bit of definition in them. Could probably get away with not even putting the shadows. I'm even going to go through this mountain and really, really kind of blend it out. And Soften it down quite a bit. Okay, that's a super quick little mountain scene. I don't even know if the painting that I have in mind needs a mountain, but guess what? I said I want to paint at least a little mountain. At least a little bit of mountain. Give me, give me a little mountain, right? Alright. A little bit more in one of these places right here. There we go. I hear the dog. And you may hear rain. We're actually getting rain for like the first time in months. I mean, we've had sprinkles, but like significant rain. We're actually starting to have the, the fear of forest fires again around here, which we have some, but none is really. Back in 2016, some people lost their lives and things, and a lot of damage done, so nothing like that yet. Alright, oh, picked up a dirty brush. Nope, don't pick up a dirty brush when you want to clean one. There's, there's a tip for today. Don't use a dirty brush when you want to clean one. I just want to soften this out a little bit. Again, just kind of, I want to keep this mountain really high on this canvas. So I will, I will start trying to get on here more. Again, I've got these brushes for sale now and they work really well. I've been, I've been painting, it's not that I've not been painting. I've been doing a lot of classes. And when you teach, you know, 20, 25 a day, sometimes sitting down and painting in a home becomes less appealing. I love to paint, but I also um, get tired. And again, health is not horrible, but it's also not great right now. So we'll figure all that out. There we go. I'm just bringing a little bit of that in front. Kind of soften it down a little bit. Something like that. This could be little, little indications of some footy hills on it. You know, the tree line. Tap a little bit back in there. I don't know. You can grab a little paint on your brush even and just kind of bring that little ridge out a little bit more if you want to. And then I'm going to take. So I've got all the brushes you could need to paint in this method. 
So I've got a little blender, which I'm going to use on this. A little fan brush, a nice filbert. I really like the filbert a lot. And then the best brush in the whole hot. They're all good. Well, I picked up my old one. This one doesn't have my name, but it's the same brush. A little script on it, a long haired script on it. That's why this one's stiff, because I haven't cleaned this one yet. <laughs> That's an old one. That was the sample brush. So I'm going to take this blender brush and I'm just going to soften this down even more. Even more, may pull up on those little areas back in there. Who knows? Just whatever. But this brush is so soft that you really have a hard time moving the paint around. Bring a little bit of that color on down just a little bit. Like that old mountain just sitting back in there waiting. Waiting for Christmas, maybe. I don't know. Bring a little bit of that color down just to give it. And of course, I, I do have liquid white on here, so as it comes down, it's going to mix. All right, all righty, all righty, all righty. Let's see what we can do here. Let's take a clean brush or mine, right? Paint brim, and let's let's think about this. Let's grab some white. I tell you what, let's clean off. Uh, one one second. Let's let's do one thing. Let me wipe this brush off. We'll wipe out the brush I was using for the mountain, and I just want to. I can clean off my brush, but just kind of putting a little tint. Of, if you try to paint this one, be very careful. You're not trying to put color on here. Just clean the brush off, so that'll help for shadows. A little bit, not much, but a little bit. So let's grab some little paint. Let's grab some little white, pretty much pure white. And that one, I'll show you the brush, and I'm going through a good bit of white actually. See, it's almost going to be um, chiseled. I, I don't need it to be, but it pretty much is now. So I want to think about this mountain being way back in there and right in here whew, being a nice little bump of snow right there. Getting cut off by that little snow run. So this is a hill that you're looking in that mountain's back there in the background. Again, I can I can raise this up a little bit if I need to. Just pull that paint on there. And the one advantage of painting snow on white canvas is super easy. You don't need much else besides that. So that gives me a little place to park maybe just a few trees. Just a few. And I want to think about those trees being very light. So I'm going to use a little bit of white. I'm sorry, a little bit of blue. And a good bit of white. I want them to be almost like they're ghostly. Almost ghost trees. Mm -mm. Now I see. Let's hold this up here. I'll show you how light this blue is. It's like a baby, baby blue. Look at that. See that? It's almost color used on the mountain, actually. Maybe just a little more white in there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna grab a fan brush now. Again, nice. It's a super nice fan brush. It's a thinner fan brush. It's not one of those that's like this wide. It's also not this big. It's a, it, it feels like a true six, if that makes any sense. A true six, number six fan brush. And um, it's it works. It comes to a super, I'll show you. It comes to a super nice chiseled edge. Look at this. Look how sharp that is. I think it could hurt you. It won't do. It's a nice brush. Don't worry about that. All right. Let's, uh, let's consider... Here, let's consider some trees right here. And maybe they come up into the sky a little bit. What I want to be able to see is at least enough of that in the snow so that uh, I know they're going to show up pretty good. And then maybe there's another, we'll paint two or three right here. Wherever. Maybe there's one right here that's a little crooked. Who knows? All right, yeah. How do we paint trees? We paint trees like we always paint trees, right? You either go in like this, you get your uh, Sam Elliott or Magnum P.I. trees because you can get the whole brush on there all at once, or you kind of turn it to the side and you just barely start kind of just making little marks on these trees. And you push down. And then you start going to the left and to the right. And these will be very faint looking trees. We can always go back and we probably will here in a minute. Want to paint everything I want to. We'll probably put just a little bit of a white highlight on those, so to make them pop a little more. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see them when you're painting them, but you know they're there. So don't let them 
Just shake them out of that brush. It's kind of come down through there. And yeah, doing, of course, down trees, if there is such a thing. We went to Alaska and looking at the different types of trees. There's a lot of trees. There are all kinds of different trees up there. Uh, not just down trees. They're not just up trees. There's all kinds of different trees. Some trees will go down and up. I'm like, what? I've been fooled. So this painting should be a very, very simple painting. I mean, look at what I've been on that mountain just a few minutes, and it's not a great, I mean, it's meant to just be back there. It's kind of a placeholder more than anything, just kind of eat up a little space on the canvas. And then we'll finish this little guy out here. But this one should be a good beginner one or an intermediate one. You can make it a little harder, make the mountain a little nicer. Spend a little more time on it if you want to, but for me, I thought that was plenty. There we go. There. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You always go back and kind of find a little area of your trees you don't like, maybe. That's all you need for that. All you need for that little area. And then what I'd probably do, we'll grab our one inch brush again. Probably hear that rain starting to come down pretty good now. Probably, probably just kind of pull a little bit of a shadow out. Because I'm going to have the light. Have this light and I'll show you. I think I'll put a little bit more to cover up most of this. Most of this I think covered. A bit like that. And as we're thinking about it before we forget them, let's just kind of take our knife through that tree there, maybe straighten that top up a little bit, make it a little pointier. And then watch this. There's one tree, here comes another one. There comes one, there comes one, there comes one. I mean, how many trees you want? They're back there. Just put them in there. It will not matter. I apologize, my nose is running here. I think it's the weather change. All right, so we've got that. We got our nice little trees back in there, nice little sky. And one thing I forgot, I better put it before I forget. Somewhere up in here, there's going to be a little moon. That's it. That's all I need. Hey, you could do that with a brush. You could take a silver brush or any brush and just kind of draw it in there. But no real point when a finger works just, just as good. I slap my finger off. Now, if this was like, you know, not a um, toxic lead paint or something, probably wouldn't use the finger. Probably wouldn't be painting either. I want to take just a little bit of this and just want to pull out another little indication of some snow right in there. See that how bright that blew up? I don't want to do that everywhere and I don't want to do it all the way again down through here. This is a cold painting so I'm just going to kind of do it occasionally. Leaving some of that shadow in there. And then what I want to do I want to think about this starting to split now. Start to split this. I want to come in here with a little, little bit of blue, just a tiny bit. Okay, that helps. Helps to be able to see what you're doing too. I don't want my angle to start coming back this way. A lot of snow. A lot of snow. There you go. Or, sorry, a lot of white paint. I should say. Whew, look at that. It looks pretty good already. It's cold, but it looks pretty good. And this looks a little naked here. Just wait. I got an idea for it. I won't give you a naked painting today. All right, there we go. So we got some different angles going on. We got one coming this way, and we got one coming back this way. We got our little hill here. We'll probably have one coming like this, and probably one right down through here. Once we get to all of that, I bet you we'll have more in here. Let's take the, the fan brush here and we're going to add a little bit more blue to the same mixture. I want it to stay kind of light, but not light. So the only thing that ever matters here is your values. So if you have a really light tree, go to somewhere in the middle for the next set and then go somewhere a little darker for the third set if you've got three sets of trees. And that applies where we're doing mountain scene with snow or you know just trees in general in spring or any kind of season. We'll use that different value. All right, so I know 
I know from personal experience where I don't want these trees. I'm going to make these pretty dark, actually. As long as I, again, as long as I make the next set darker. Yeah, there we go. I like that color. It's almost a real, that's a really pretty blue. Look at that. I know that I want, I know my hand's in the way. You can yell at me later. I know that I want one big one right here. Now, what I don't want to do is eat up the tree that is painted. So there's that. That'll give me an indication of where that one lives. And then maybe there's another one next. Well, let's go ahead and paint one, and then we'll figure out where the other two go. We'll just take our, take our brush here and just kind of start making our little marks on the canvas. That's all we've got to do to paint trees. Just kind of go middle, left, right, or vice versa. Left, right, right, left. It doesn't matter which way you go. As long as you kind of vary the lengths of these little... I don't know what kind of tree this is. This, is a, this must be a blue spruce is all I know. As long as you kind of vary the thickness as you come down this tree and you vary the length of the, the um, for better, lack of a better word today, the arms of the tree, <laughs> you're going to be in good shape. And I'm just going to let these kind of sit in the snow. I don't really care where they end pretty much. But there's a nice little evergreen. A little maybe a stretch, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I do hope everybody's been doing well. I've seen quite a few of you in classes and a lot of you bought brushes already from me. That's so, th I'm so thankful for that. Uh, I just can't tell you, I can't imagine that I sold the first set out. I didn't buy enough. Uh, so uh, super, super supportive guys. Uh, and it's super uh, uh, appreciated. I really, uh, I just, I can't tell you enough. I can't thank you enough, I guess you should say. But we have a few sets left where I was supposed to have had an event in November and the event got postponed for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and sell those and then I've got another batch of brushes coming along here. And, you know, really I do like this fan brush. It makes some really nice trees, but I tell you the one thing it's really good at. Mm -hmm is uh, using it in the seascape. <laughs> it's really good for the for the foam. Uh, it's for the good for the uh, splashing over on the, like the trough area. It's really good for that. And maybe maybe there's a little there's guy these guys need a little friend, don't they? Not to sound like some TV artist there, but they do. They need another person there. Another, another tree person. Gotta have places for your mooses to hide. And the one thing I'll tell you right now, Michael's, so this is, I think, two days before Thanksgiving. Michael's is having a big sale on canvases, guys. I'm using a cheap old canvas because that's what I had out there. And I can tell you, when I use a cheap canvas, I can always tell. They're just not good enough for what I want. But, I mean, they'll work for me for now. They're not. They're not as good as they should be. So I've got this little angle. Those trees are kind of sitting on there. But I also want to just think about another little bump here. And that's a little bump. I pull down. So easy to shape and sculpt snow with shadows. And you definitely, because we can see where the light probably pushed a lot of this dark in this area. You could just smack it in here. And then we could highlight a little bit of it if we want to. Like a little light zinging across it. But something like that. Something like that. And of course we'll highlight those trees. We won't leave them naked. Pretty simple, pretty simple. Let's make sure the camera's still going. All right. Oh, let's paint some more trees. I, again, I wanted this one to get me back in the habit of doing these videos because um, I enjoy doing them. And I especially enjoy when you guys watch them. So if you're watching still, hey, how you doing? Um, but, but I get off track when I get busy. Get off track. All right, so I'm gonna take a lot of Prussian blue. I'm even gonna put a little thin out black in there. And this, I want these guys to be the next set of trees are gonna be so dark, so dark. I won't clean the brush, so there'll still be a little bit of that blue and white in there from previous 
tree, but we'll go ahead and just kind of load it. Look at the difference. See that? So, again, that may uh, not quite be <laughs> stepped down like into the middle, but that really pushes those trees back there. And then we've got these guys here. So I know, we've got three trees, three trees. Oh, you can always do this. Remember this little, little trick we've already done once today, right? Notice how I didn't cover these trees. They're, they're planted pretty much in front of each other, but I saved room over here so I get the big one. And I can still see all those guys, and that's the important part there. Hand shaky. I had a Zoom class and I, I painted a snowman. Probably the worst snowman I've ever painted. My hands are so shaky right now. Yeah, something like that. Alright, so we know we want some big trees back in here. For sure. And I always like to think about if my moon's right there, I'd probably put a tree that would go up to my moon. Or at least close to it. And just kind of come down through here and just kind of make that little line. I always like to do that. It just gives me an indication of where I'm going with the tree. Right? And we'll just kind of put this guy on here. Just kind of little little marks at the top. I always like to keep the the top nice and skinny on a tree. And let it get a little wider as you start coming down. You're just kind of pushing down. That's all you're doing. Now what I would tell you to do if you're trying to paint trees is paint some trees on something and try them fast and try them slow. Some people, not me, some people paint trees better fast. It's just I've seen it in classes enough to know that. I'd be like, well, you're going a little faster than I would, but your trees are beautiful. So you may like to paint trees fast and it may um, not allow you time to worry about them. That's probably why some people paint them fast. So, try them out and see. Won't hurt you, right? You know, if you mess them up, just go back over them. And reload paint. You see me go away from the camera, you probably know what I'm doing. Now. There we go. I keep it pretty dark over here as we get down that. As we get down through here, we just kind of big old tree, just kind of wherever. And then we're we'll full, of course, like I did before. And, and bring snow under and stuff. Oh, I better stop right there. I almost forgot. I wanted to put just a little sparkler of snow on a couple of these areas. Look how much paint's in my brush right there. Go right outside that dark edge and just, just like that. Just kind of leave it. Leave it like that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, who knows? It might have a little, little bit there, and you can always just kind of, just kind of. Leave it like that. Let that let that be a little sparkler in there for your snow. You'll like it much better. It'll look nicer on your painting. So, and that's my opinion. So, do what you want to with your painting. All right, let's do another tree. Let's do another one. Yeah, right, right next door. I really don't want to go that tall with that one. I would like to get it in a little crook there. I'll just go about right here. Maybe this guy just kind of, he got stepped on there as a baby and he's leaning. Hey, what you got to watch out for in Alaska is on mooses. Hey, it's making me pig. We would go on, uh, after I taught a couple days, or after I would teach each day, we would go on moose hunts. In the car. And not trying to hit them with the car, but trying to see them from the car. And boy, we went everywhere. Near Fairbanks and places. And we started driving back to where we were staying. There's a moose right there. So, yeah, you don't have to go very far to find them. And I will figure out which one of these, probably the big ones, and, and closer to me, so I'll highlight it accordingly. Now, yeah. We got two in there. We'll need another one probably, but I'll tell you what we should do right now. We should start thinking about another little ridge right in here. And we'll make this kind of dark. It's a little closer. It's a little further away from the uh, further away from the uh, light source. But we'll also hide it. And I don't need it probably this dark, but I may mind that dark, so. What we got, right? 
No big deal. There we go. Cold painting, right? I tell you what also looks kind of cool and, and kind of good. That is cool. This big guy. The little one stayed a little bit taller up on that hill. And this one just kind of said, I'm going to come on down here and live. That way we know that one's in front now. Yeah, something like that. Sometimes. It's a little closer to us. It's always fun. You can even shoot, you can have you a couple little hills here. And you could probably take a good bit of this dark and really make this corner dark. Pretty much out of the light. And again, it's not going to stay this dark everywhere. But right there. Look how nice that looks. The contrast now. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'll probably clean the fan brush. We'll start highlighting some of these trees. Nope. Let's paint one more. Let's paint one more. If you don't mind. It's a pretty quick video. So far, and watch me all spend an hour doing one tree. What if we had? What if? What if? What if? What do you think? And now, right here's. Let's, let's make sure we got everything done. We want to do right in here because I'm getting ready to paint a tree through there, so it'd be hard to kind of mess with it. Let's just take my little soft blender here, make this even look better. And just kind of, it just makes the snow and the shadows and everything just look so pretty. Look at that. Just kind of fuzzes everything out. I went outside my line there. I'm going to fix that too. There we go. It's pretty dark there though. A little bit more of that dark this way. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 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 Back to the fan brush now. I'm doing what I said I was going to do. Oh, I see another tree. I kind of like how these guys just kind of all meet up somewhere in the middle there. Eh. Not that high. Though. I want this one to be a baby. Right there. Now you could, for simplicity's sake, probably highlight these first. I'm not worried about it. And then highlight these next. But I didn't want to have to clean my brush a couple times. So we'll just kind of leave this guy a little sparse. He had a rough winter. I see a lot of dead trees in Alaska. I see a lot of dead trees up in the UP too. Or up in Michigan this summer. Oh, he's a little full right at the bottom. He's a fat bottom tree. I think there's a song about that. Again, what happens at the bottom doesn't really matter because I'll probably. Oh, uh, probably. I know I will. I'll just pull it into the. Make another little hump there. See that? Change that angle and stuff. Again, pull a good bit of that dark that way. Alright. Very cool. Let's clean the fan brush and we'll highlight the trees. Going into the paint thinner, well, mineral spirits, whichever you want to call it. It is mineral spirits, what I need to do. I'll take the towel and dry that off a little bit. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Whew. Well, that blue doesn't like to come out. Can make my fan brush all nasty. I've been trying to keep my brushes really clean. They stain. That's just what they're going to do. What paint brushes do? They will stand on you. Alright, let's get this. I am thinning that paint down with just a touch of the paint thinner in it. And I'm going right to white. Pretty much just, and I mean, it's just because there's nothing pure white in nature. I'll throw just a touch of blue. Tiny, tiny. You'll see, you'll look like, this, this will look white to you guys. Almost, it's lighter than the tree, the first trees we painted. So, so the tree, it's got a little blue tint to it. All right. And again, maybe that just, let's see, maybe a little bit back there. Yeah, it's a little chunky for that. I should let my paintbrush run out of paint first. Yeah, I really don't need it back there. I wouldn't do that. Started, I probably should finish them. Just a little bit more detail in them, maybe. Touch, touch, touch or two more detail in them. Not much, not much at all. 
I like to touch the tops of the trees, that way it looks kind of like a snow just kind of accumulating up there in the tops. And boy, these are heavy, heavy snow trees. See that? Just kind of let it be thick on there. Let it sit thick. Oh, I got too much paint in my brush. There we go. Got a little better now. You need a good bit of paint to highlight, but you don't need it to keep dropping. It's sopping wet. Because I don't want to lose the um, definition of the trees. You cover up all your dark. Pretty much something like that. <laughs> that was a little drippy right there. Could just be a that's a heavy deposit of snow right there. Right in the middle. Sometimes I'll even do that on, on purpose, just kind of leave a nicely heavy spot in the middle. And maybe just kind of come over here and just kind of come down that tree. Wherever. These don't need a lot. The next ones will matter more to me. And that's what those highlights are meant. Again. Alright, let's go up here to these big ones. The big ones matter. Boop, boop. And we know if we had the highlights on the right side of the tree for those other ones, on these, I'm sorry, on the left side of the tree mainly, mostly on this side of the tree, be on the right side of the tree for these guys because these are on the right, left side of the moon. But don't ever let a tree just have highlights on one side of the tree. That will look like you took a, you know, a saw or something and just kind of saw down through it. Better do this one first. There we go. And always be aware of your paint consistency as you're working in your highlights and things. As it starts changing, as you start noticing it change, you can always add a little bit of maybe some kind of liquid white or something just to make that consistency come back a little bit more to uh, what you want it to be and I'm just kind of going here and just putting a little bit extra right there I want that thick spot again in that tree there we go heavy snow up in Alaska so I notice we're Fairbanks and places were really getting soft with snow already. More than normal already. So just kind of leave it like that. I kind of like the looks of that. Oh, I laid my brush down. Oh, I laid right down dark blue too. <laughs> well, the little guy won't be quite as white. He'll be more of a blue spruce. I'm not going to clean the brush for that. Everything doesn't have to be super bright. Just whatever. Something like that. Something like that. Now we go back to our brush. And again, if you've got a couple brushes, it's always good. Let's go back to our brush that's pretty much white. And stay out of the blue, you know. And we want to start thinking about... And I probably shouldn't put that hill in yet. <laughs> that's all right. Make it work. And maybe this one comes back this way. A little bit of a, a little bit of an indication of some heavy snow up against those trees. Just get right, maybe this little one, get right up against it and let that snow just kind of sit there and don't keep messing with it. So it looks like that snow's piled up against that tree, which is what would happen. Those trees wouldn't, you wouldn't see those trunks if, if they have trunks. Oh, maybe right there's another good spot to kind of bring out another little bit of snow and I'm just kind of working it back and forth. You're going to see here in a minute what I'm going to do with this. It won't stay looking like this. That's a harsh angle. Change that a little bit. There we go. That's just kind of to get it started. And I like that. Now I'll go back to my palette knife. Once I know I got the trees all situated and they're all where I want them to be, I'll go back to my palette knife and I'll go right into some. Looks like I was doing a big old amount with snow. Maybe some clean white. Well. I would have. I might have to get some. I might have to clean off my knife again. I got blue in my paint. I didn't want blue that time. There we go. That'll work. 
It's got a little blue, but I want this to be pretty thick back in here. I'm just going to take that and just kind of let the knife just go where it wants and let it kind of just pull off when it wants. Pretty much just like you're doing a big mountain here. There it goes. There goes our little bit that's kind of chunked up on our tree. There we go. See that? I like that. I like it that it gives it a change. You, you could leave it just like it was and it would be perfectly fine and pretty. But I like the, the texture change that it gives by doing this. It just gives a little more detail right where that moon would be hitting. Over here, I probably won't put any, and if I do, I'll show you what I would do if you wanted to. Again, you can just move that around a little bit even. Look at that, boy, that angle got steep on it. Like a bowl. You could ski down that little hill. Now, if I wanted to, you could put a little bit, and I'll show you what to do. Don't take white, take a shadowy blue. Pretty dark shadowy blue, and and do the same thing in the shadows. So just don't know that you'd see that much detail in the shadows. But I get an idea of what I'm talking about there. Over in here, maybe a little blue snow accumulating right in there. So I'll just kind of work that out. Where's that tree go? I want to get rid of my tree if I'm not careful. Gonna work a little bit of that textury, textury stuff in there. It's a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, but not bright, right? See that? And then what I like to do on this one is I've kind of painted this one before. You know, just take that little blender, no pressure, literally no pressure. Probably should have started right in the snowy spots, or the brightest spots, you should say, not snow because it's all snow. And just kind of set that down to where it's not quite as chunky. You may not like a chunky tree. Now let's see if I can make this old brush work. It is stiff. Like I said, this is not this is my brush, but it's one I've uh, had for almost two years now. So as a sample, and it needs to be cleaned. I need to get the paint this dried in there out. I picked up the wrong one when I went out there to grab brushes. Ah, what is used blue? You could get some other colors out if you wanted to. Might even be prettier. And you know me. You know what's going to happen. Yeah, let's see if my shaky hand really helps today. Well, it doesn't really matter what kind of paint's in that brush. This brush is still the best script liner I've ever used. I mean, my, my number two, the same one. A little bit of stick tree there, maybe maybe it comes, I don't know, it could come on down a little bit further right in here. I'll probably put them in there a little bit better. Set them in the snow a little bit. We got one, and then maybe there's one in, oh, reaching up into there. And you're going through a good bit of white paint, so you're going to have to have your paint quite thin. And you're going to start hearing my dogs get up and meander around probably. I'm painting about dinner time for them, so they're gonna they're gonna start getting a little perturbed if I don't hurt. They like to stay on their schedule. Oh, I don't I don't want to put one right here. That's that's too much to me. So I'll just put another one right up in here. Maybe not quite a big. Just just but he's just he's just starting to grow. See the little errant hair on that one. That's because it's kind of wrapped around on itself. I need to clean this. Like I said, you can clean this brush with a little bit of a brush conditioner and it'll come right back out. Whenever Steve would use it in classes, I'd always have to clean them really good. So you would sock the paint to them. And sometimes I didn't get all the paint out. And well, we know it. Well, next time I went to use it. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, don't do that. Let's use a knife. We're almost done. Look, I finished painting. Hey, I know it's an easy one. 
But it's, it's a pretty one. It, it, if you like snow, it's a pretty one. I'm going to go a little bit more. Don't, don't follow me on this one here. I was just thinking maybe a little brighter spot on that mountain might be nice. Um, something like that. I was seeing that little area. It looks a little nakedy. Maybe it's a little better right there, even. Don't go too far because, again, we're painting backwards here now. I'm doing something I would not suggest you doing unless you're comfortable doing it. Kind of go back and touch up things as you see them. There, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, I like that better. I could always just let it look on on that side, let it kind of pull a little bit of that down. You know, you get a little bit of a little bit of almost a cliffy look there. I don't know if that shows up on the camera or not. And then we go back to our handy dandy little. You can even tap it out just a little bit. And just be careful here. Ooh. Like I said, this brush is super soft, but it, it will move paint. Too, too harsh with it. You might get in trouble with it, especially when you're trying to paint backwards. Back to front. Uh, what was I going to do? I was going to do something, wasn't I? Nobody here to tell me. Oh, I was going to set these. I was going to set these trees in a little bit better. Just a little pull there. I don't really want to see where that stick originates. Rid of my nice bright snow. So I got blue paint on them. And then this one, I'll just kind of knock the, the bottom off of that one, and that'll be fine. Now, the last little thing that I would do, if it was me, doesn't have to be, it can be you. Make sure your brush is really clean for this, so because what you don't want to have is a lot of blue in here. Uh, blue snow on white snow looks really odd, so I'm going to put a little snow in here. A super easy way. I'll take a little bit of. Um, a white liquid medium and just a touch of paint thinner mostly just mostly look liquid medium if it's white and I'll just kind of go into that and load up my fan brush and you know what I'm going to do here super simple super soft super easy let's go I'll take my right handed hand I've got my good shoes on so I'm going I'm to stand up and make sure I don't get paint everywhere we got everything looking pretty good. I like how the trees highlighted. Not too much, not too little. Let's put a little snow up here. Oh, not thin enough. Always got to figure out the consistency you need. And it's snow. It's not stars. So you want all different sizes. As long as you're not getting like lines that are white. I'm sorry, that are straight. You'll probably be fine. Because... It's snow. There we go. And keep that snow pretty white. It will look odd right in here if you get it too. Too. Um, you see how I look at those big ones? I love it. And hopefully we don't run into too much. See, this goes everywhere. This is snow falling. This is like you're standing here looking at it. You don't even have, This painting's pretty without doing this, by the way. I like snow. So. so it goes over your trees, it goes man, it goes everywhere. If you're walking up on this scene, you wouldn't just see snow in the sky. You'd see it falling in front of the trees and it'd be falling in front of your eyes. And getting on your eyelashes, all that stuff the snow does. So however much you think you need is how much you need. And then you stop. And I would recommend we stop everybody. Hopefully, you're not taking a long way to be. I think I can, yeah, I can. I can get away with it. But I would recommend signing it before you, um, before you actually did that. And down in here, I don't like to see all these big chunks, so I, I can take that and just kind of rub any out that I don't like, just like that. And really, that's about it. The only ones I don't like are those two. But up there, I love seeing these bigger ones. Falling everywhere, I love the snow. Let's sign the paint and be done. And guess what? Hey, 
Graham got on and did a video that he'll post tonight, probably. What a sign right here. With Prussian, straight Prussian blue. And that's what I use for the sticks, too. Pretty much it's painting Prussian blue, black, and white. You don't need a lot of colors to make a painting. I'm going to stand back and look at it. Let's see what we got here. Let me get my chair out of the way. Oh, yeah. Let me get you a straight on view. There it is. Woo! That is cold, cold, cold. Better grab you a good coat. So there we go, guys. My first video that I have made in forever. Hopefully it'll get better, more detailed. This is this is a simple painting. Super good one for a beginner and a super good one if you like snow. But all right, so everybody have a happy Thanksgiving and I will see you again and maybe next, you know, another week. I'll put another video on. Um, everything goes well with my health. I should be able to do that. All right, so I'll talk to you soon. Um, happy Thanksgiving. Take care.